Now, the last thing I want to talk about in this module is, of course, the lighting. We haven't talked about lighting a whole lot at this point. We've just been really busy designing the label art. But now we need to address the lighting itself because it looks a little overblown, uh, especially in some areas, it's a lot brighter than it needs to be. And that's uh, obviously due to the lighting. And that's what we're going to take a look at here. So we're going to go ahead and open up the 3D and properties panels yet again. The first thing we're going to talk about is the IBL or image based light, which is uh, applied to this object right now. Go ahead and select the environment property. And when you do that, you're going to see that your image or a small orb appears in the middle of the image. This is a visual aid for your image based light. Now, an image based light is merely an image, a graphic or a photo that is basically shining light on your subject. Think of it as a sphere around your object, a translucent sphere and light is shining through and whatever image is on the sphere will also be reflected on the surface of your 3D object. And that image can be anything. So for instance, I'm gonna go over here in the 3D panel, make sure environment is selected. And in the properties panel at the very top, you're gonna to see IBL right here. And here you can see this little preview of the default IBL that has been applied. If you go into the little menu here and choose edit texture, you can see exactly what it is and it's just merely a gray background with a few white dots on it. So that is the default image-based light. I'm gonna go ahead and close that so you can see what's going on. I'm gonna click and drag my rotate tool and you can see I can rotate the, um, the image-based light in relation to the subject. See how the light is changing on the surface of the object there. Now I don't wanna use the default IBL. We're actually gonna create our own custom one and then we're gonna add some other lighting to, to make it a little bit more dramatic. So let's begin by first creating a brand new IBL document. So go into that same menu next to IBL here, and this time choose new texture. I'm gonna set this to a thousand by a thousand pixels. Doesn't need to be very large. And I'm also gonna set my background to black. And when I go ahead and click okay, you're gonna see the image go a little bit more, uh, a little bit darker and a little bit more contrasting. And that's because we have replaced that gray and white IBL with a solid black, which means the only light we're seeing now is coming from the other default lights, uh, which is the infinite light. In the 3D panel here, if you click on the light bulb at the top, you got a series of tabs here at the top. So the light bulb is at the very end here. Here you'll see whatever lights have been applied to your 3D objects. In this case, we have the environmental, uh, the environmental lighting and then this infinite light. When you select the infinite light, you'll notice that you just move it around and that's shining the object or that's shining light directly on the object and you can change the angle of it just by clicking and moving uh, on the canvas here. But back to our IBL, which is dark, we're gonna go back in there and this time choose edit texture. We created the new IBL with a black background. Now we're gonna go in here and add some custom elements to it. Now, typically when I'm creating an IBL, I, used to, I like to just use abstract graphic elements. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my elliptical marquee tool here in the toolbar, jump over to the layers panel and create a brand new blank layer. And then I'm just gonna draw an oval shape in the upper area of this document. And I'm gonna get my gradient tool and go ahead and get my foreground transparent gradient once again, press D then X to make sure white is my foreground color. And I'm just gonna start on the outside of the, of the selection and just drag in a gradient from the left side. And it just gives me this interesting fade with a nice curved sharp edge on it. If I close this uh, IBL image and save the changes, what you're gonna see is a new effect on our soda can here. So if I drag and move around my IBL, it's getting that one shiny element. Instead of the, the light gray and those bunch of little dots, we're not even getting one element here and it's looking pretty good. But now I need to modify the reflection properties of the can itself. So back in the 3D panel, we're gonna go back to our label art. And right inside here, remember we have, we, here's where we adjusted the diffuse property. But just below that, there is a specular setting and it's got a light gray on it by default. And I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna give me a color picker. And I'm actually gonna make this a little bit darker. This is basically adjusting the, the intensity of the specular highlight on the, on the surface of the object. So I'm gonna dial that down to a little bit darker gray there. There we go. Now further down, you'll notice we've got settings for shine and reflection here. 
The shine, I'm actually gonna increase to about 70. And the reflection, I'm gonna set at about 50%. And just by doing that, you can see it really punches up the bump map and the lighting on the object here. If I reselect environment and see that orb in the middle, if I click and move around, there I can move that image-based light reflection around the surface of my soda can there. So that's looking really good. So now what I want to do is go and change the other light. If we go back to that lights section, and right down here there is an infinite light, like I said, that is the default. If you select infinite light and go over to the properties panel here, you can go into this type menu and change the type of light it is. So it's, it's an infinite light right now, but let's change it to a spotlight. You'll see this cone wireframe up here. And to make sure it's shining on our main object, go to the bottom of the properties panel and you've got two buttons here for point at origin and move to view. So click on both of those and it will reset the position of the light right in front of the object. Now I'm gonna use my 3D tools here in the options bar to go ahead and reposition the light itself. So again, these 3D tools are used to modify your camera, your objects, and your lights. So I'm gonna grab this slide tool, the pan tool, which is the center tool right here, and click and drag that up. And then I'll use the, ro the orbit tool to kind of rotate the light down. So I'm positioning the light above and out of view here, and then tilting it down so it shines right on the can uh, surface itself. Here, let's drag this back a little bit. So that's looking really good. So that's what we're gonna do as far as the lighting goes. Now as the project progresses, we're gonna be making some tweaks on the lighting and such like that. But uh, for now, that will help us get a better idea of what the dramatic lighting scenario is gonna be when we bring in the final background elements. Now, one more thing to do here in this module is I wanna adjust the cap material, which is the top and bottom of the can. And we're gonna take a look at that in the next and final clip of this module.